We've got two quick news items today that didn't deserve their own separate videos. One is AMD Zen. There's a bunch of news on that at, well, sort of IDF next door anyway. And then NVIDIA now has a GTX 1060 with three gigabytes of VRAM officially this time, not just a rumor. So we'll be talking about that in a second. First, this content is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC, which has the red LED underglow, arc LED fans, and a large tempered glass side window so you can look at all of the LEDs. First off with AMD, the Zen architecture is of course the new architecture coming up. It is replacing sort of the uh, Vishera, Bulldozer, Excavator, all those chips are going to be EOL as Zen rolls in. The main chip that we've seen a few times now and was shown officially at the Sunnyvale, well, San Francisco event by the Sunnyvale company, it is the eight core 16 thread chip. So it is an SMT chip. It's got simultaneous multi-threading, which is basically what Intel's hyper-threading is. They've sort of rebranded it and changed a few things. But same idea where you've got eight physical cores, 16 threads, that was on display at this event and AMD showed a 40% IPC gain instructions per cycle, which is something they've needed to compete in performance with Intel and hopefully reach parity, if not exceed Intel's current gen performance. So that was shown, the 40% gain. There were also some architecture unveils for Zen, and this was uh, demonstrated through the eight core 16 thread chip and through a server chip called Naples, which is a 32 core 64 thread chip. That is a server chip. Again, it's not something you'll use in a gaming PC, they had two of those in a server board, so uh, sort of like an old skull trail setup, except just server to, to CPU motherboard. Uh, so that was demonstrated, and some of the architecture information revealed for Summit Ridge, which is the 8-core 16-thread one that we're mostly looking at, uh, increases the issue width and execution resources by 1.5x over Excavator, and a 1.75x increase in the instruction scheduler window over Excavator as well. Single thread performance improves by greater instruction level parallelism, and AMD still drives a big focus on energy units. So this is something that AMD's always been pretty big on energy units over uh, floating point. Obviously, there's still floating point. Half the block diagram is floating point. But energy units specifically were shown at this event, and we can see that there are four ALUs, two AGUs, and the latter of which pipe into the load store queues. Zen can perform two loads and one store with each cycle and caches in a 32K eight-way decache. The FPU side of the chip runs two multiply and two adds for floating point operations with a single scheduler flanked by the FP rename and FP register file. We'll talk about this more in the future, probably in our Zen review once we get there and explain what all this stuff means. Cache is mostly unified now. So there's eight megabytes of L3 cache shared and then the L2 cache is also unified for instruction use. So uh, that is a big part of these IPC gains. Cache is, it plays a huge role in CPU performance, especially with certain types of modern games. So that's one of the big news items. Uh, it is 14 nanometer FinFET, same as sort of the Polaris lineup. Uh, and that means that all the same power efficiency gains native to that process node are going to be yielded pretty much in Zen. Clock gating is still there, and AMD also showed clock for clock blender performance, which is a rendering and animation tool. Uh, so they showed clock for clock performance versus an i7 Broadwell E chip at eight cores, 16 threads. So same core and thread count, obviously completely different architecture, so not perfectly linear. Uh, and clock for clock, not necessarily perfectly linear, but AMD claimed that they were outperforming Intel in this specific application with Blender. Uh, presumably for render times. Finally, Summit Ridge will launch on the AM4 platform, which is brand new. It will be replacing the AM3 Plus platform and the FM platform. So APUs will no longer be on their own platform, which is actually a really good thing, probably, as long as they all function fine. But the good part of it is, if you buy one motherboard, you can use it for either APUs or Zen CPUs, as long as it's 7th gen APUs. Uh, so obviously the upgrade pathway is clear. If you wanted to kind of migrate one board down and use it for an APU setup, then you could do that. So that is AM4. Bristol Ridge will function in AM4 if you have read about that architecture, that processor. Uh, and system integrators will be shipping AM4 systems starting in the second half of this year very soon uh, and hopefully we'll be reviewing it. So AMD is moving to AM4, which has modern support for PCIe Gen 3, USB 3.1, and DDR4 native support and SATA Express support. So it's completely updated. NVMe is also there. 
all those issues with the M3 Plus will be resolved with the M4. The next bit of news is about the GTX 1063 gigabyte card. We don't have one yet. A Nvidia is not sampling media this time, so I've got some on the way through board partners and we'll be reviewing it. But basically it's a three gigabyte card. It's not the same as the 1060 though. The specs are changed a bit. So they've disabled one SM or simultaneous multiprocessor. If you look at a block diagram of the card for the 1060, six gigabyte, you'll see 10 SMs. And one of those has effectively been turned off. So that means uh, with 128 cores per SM, we go from 1280 CUDA cores on the 1066 gigabyte down to 1152 CUDA cores on the three gigabyte card. So that's one of the big changes that will impact performance. Certainly the clock rate is the same on the three gigabyte and six gigabyte models. And uh, that's the, the sort of 1500, 1700 megahertz clock rate that we've talked about before. Other than this, frame buffer is different. TMU count is down a bit, CUDA core count is down a bit, clock rate's the same, and the frame buffer is half. So that's the main update with this card. In the past, the most we've seen these VRAM changes to impact performance have been in very specific applications, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Black Ops 3 with certain settings, Mirror's Edge Catalyst with certain settings, things like that. Not every game will reflect the change, but some of them do. Uh, I don't know if this is sort of uh, correlation is not a causation thing, but often in GameWorks titles we see a change. So that's something we'll be talking about. NVIDIA claims a 5% delta between the 3 and 6 gigabyte cards, but a $50 price gap. I'm not sure how uh, it'll actually work because you're still removing 10% of the cores. So uh, that 10% with a 5% reduction seems weird. So we'll be testing that. Uh, and NVIDIA is also claim claiming a performance gain over AMD's RX 488 gigabyte card of 10%. So we'll validate that as well, but they're not sampling. So I'll, I'll make sure we get some, whether I have to buy it or otherwise. Uh, availability will begin in the next couple weeks for the three gigabyte card. It will be $200 MSRP. We'll see what it actually lands at, but that's $50 reduced in MSRP from the six gigabyte model. And uh, that's, that's really all there is to it. So we'll see, we'll see how it works. The driver update was pushed today, so that will make cards function once they're out there. Board partners are starting to send them out. Uh, so we'll have news for you on that and on Zen as more news is available. Uh, next week, there will be a Zen update as well. So we'll try and post some information on that. It'll be about architecture again. Thank you for watching as always. Patreon link is the post for all video for information. Hit the links in the description below. We've got articles on both of these news items already. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.